Hi. This presentation will show the mechanics behind a hash function. So a hashing routine, a hash function, a hash conversion formula transforms a series of characters that could be text, uh, numbers, a, a sequence of transactions into a fixed size hexadecimal number. So a hashing function can be very useful to store confidential data such as passwords. In fact, it's very useful to store the knowledge, to detect someone's knowledge of a password, as we will see uh, later. So a secure hashing function has the following properties. So it produces a number that has a fixed size, uh, regardless of the text entered. Okay, so if I write the, 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 the full uh, Hunger Games uh, um, uh, books, I mean, it would produce a 64 character uh, hexadecimal number if I'm using the SHA-256 uh, routine. It must be irreversible in the sense that finding the initial text entered from a hash must be extremely difficult or must demand uh, uh, very demanding uh, computer power. But then it must be easy to verify. So with, with very little computer power, someone who knows the initial text entered to produce a given hash uh, must be able to reproduce the hash with a very simple computer, okay, with very little uh, memory. So a secure hashing function has to be easy to do, hard to undo. For example, if we operate the cryptographic hash function SHA256 on Victor Hugo, we obtain the, the following number here. So this number is a hexadecimal number with 64 characters. A hexadecimal number is a number in base 16. So a number in base 16 uses 16 characters. So the 10 characters from 0 to 9 plus six other characters, which are the letters A, B, C, D, E, F, that represent the values 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So if Victor Hugo is a user's password, then the, the user who knows that the password to a given account is Victor Hugo, is the only one who can reproduce the hash 8E82CE448. So if the website stores the hash instead of storing Victor Hugo, that only the, uh, the user knowing the password will produce the correct hash that will unlock uh, this uh, specific account. A secure hash function uh, produces completely different output with a tiny modification of the text entered. So if I write Victor Hugo with capital V, capital H, this is what I obtain. If I write Victor with a small V, the output is completely different. If I write Victor Hugo followed by a dot, the output is again completely different. The most notorious Hashing functions are the uh, the function MD for message uh, digest and SHA that stand for secure hashing algorithm. So the routines MD were the first. Uh, they produced, so MD2, for example, and MD5 uh, produced 32 characters, uh, 32 character hexadecimal numbers. Uh, the routine SHA1 produced a 40 character uh, exadecimal number, which is a 160-bit uh, character, uh, so a 160-bit binary number. The SHA-256 produce, uh, produces a 64-character exadecimal number. When converting exadecimal numbers into uh, binary numbers, we multiply the number of characters by 4. So if the routine SHA 256 produces a final number that has that is a binary number with 256 characters, 256 divided by 4 gives 64. 
So there are plenty of websites uh, on the internet where you can uh, go and produce a hash from a given text entered. So here's a website where you can produce the uh, an MD5 hash. Okay, if someone enters the 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 the, the, the terms le renard et le corbeau, uh, the function will produce a 32 character hexadecimal number. You just modify the text uh, by with a very small change. So here we modified so the second LE is written with a capital L. The output is completely different. The SHA256 always produces a 64 character hexadecimal number. So how do we convert a text into a hash? So usually a hashing function follows these steps. So each key that has been entered uh, is converted into its ASCII code. And the ASCII code is written in base two with eight characters. So if the number uh, representing a given key is 76 and 76 in base two is written with uh, six characters, but we add two more zeros in front of the binary number so that the binary number occupies eight uh, spaces. The eight digit binary numbers are, are grouped four by four, okay, to create matrices with 32 columns of zeros and ones. Uh, usually, we uh, the hashing function will work with matrices that have 16 lines, 32 columns, and there are going to be more than one matrices uh, with a large text and a smaller text will uh, work with only one matrix. Binary operations are, are then performed to merge different lines of the different uh, of the matrices. Uh, and we stop performing binary operations when the desired number of lines is at attained. Once this is done, uh, we convert all these binary numbers into the, 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 the terminal binary number into a hexadecimal number. And this hexadecimal number corresponds to the hash that is, uh, of the text that has been entered. During the rest of this presentation, we will hash a small text using our own homemade routine. A uh, routine we have invented that uses like uh, the, the, the similar features of uh, more complex hashing routines. Uh, of course, our routine is way too simple and is not secure at all. Okay, so it's very easy to, uh, to work out uh, uh, someone with uh, like basic computer knowledge could be able to extract the initial text from um, the output that our uh, routine uh, produces. Uh, you can follow this example step by step at FSA Go uh, Transformation H. Okay, so the it, it's it's all in French. Uh, it's all in French, but if you go on the website. Uh, you'll be able to, uh, to, to see exactly step by step how the hashing works uh, using our homemade function. Okay, each time we press a key on a computer keyboard, uh, the computer rec re records an ASCII code. So here's all the ASCII codes of the, 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 the general English uh, computer keyboard. So there's an ASCII code for uh, space, uh, special characters, and then letters. Uh, you see uh, here, note that uh, the ASCII code of two is not two. Okay, it's fifty. So it's each time we press a key. So it's not an ASCII code for a number. It's uh, for a key. So in our example here, we write the sentence: Lady Lovelace voit un sous-marin. Okay, it's a sentence in French, but here we don't, you don't need to understand what the sentence uh, means to follow. Uh, actually, the computer does not understand uh, whether the, the text has been entered in French, English, English uh, or Spanish. Lady Lovelace uh, here voit space un space sous uh, line, okay, uh, marin de. 
Capital L76 in base 2. This is what we obtained. Small A97 in base 2. Here's what we obtained. So each base 2, each ASCII code in its base 2 representation is written with 8 characters. Okay, which is why they all begin with a 0. Okay, so here if we go up to, if we fill all the 8 ones, that gives the number 255. And there's fewer than 255 on the basic uh, English computer keyboard. So we have enough of 8 characters uh, here to uh, remember all the keys on an English keyboard. Uh, so here's space 32. So for the smaller numbers, of course, so, the, so there are, so we need to add two zeros in order to have a binary number that occupies eight spaces. Uh, and here we place the each key that has been entered uh, four by four. So we form uh, lines of four uh, numbers. Okay, until all the, all the text is uh, written. So here we don't have a 16 by 32 matrix yet, so we will have to complete the matrix. But we see that the matrix begins to have like 32 columns. So we have eight characters here, eight characters uh, here, eight characters here, and eight characters here as well. Four times eight, 32. So we leave the letters from now on, so we will be working with the numbers only. Okay, we stick the numbers together. So here's a matrix with 32 columns of zeros and ones. I write uh, one followed by seven zeros at the end of uh, the initial binary numbers entered. I complete with a bunch of zeros until I obtain my matrix has 14 lines. Now I want to have a matrix that is 16 by 32 matrix. How do I write the last two lines? So here the last two lines will correspond to the length of the text entered. So Lady Lovelace voit un sous-marin use 33 keys. So 33 keys converted into eight character binary numbers for each key entered gives 33 times eight is equal to 264 characters. The binary representation of 264 is 1000001000. So my last line will finish with this number. And then I'll be adding zeros in front of this number until I have two lines of 32 characters. Okay, so I mean, my text could be huge. Okay, if, if I was to write ones, uh, a bunch of ones uh, here uh, 64 times that that contains uh, a text that can be quite uh, quite large we add these two lines at the bottom of our uh, 14 line matrix and that gives our matrix our 16 by 32 matrix we will be working with okay so we have 16 lines of 32 characters each so we will merge the lines together, uh, perform binary operations on these lines uh, until we end up with four lines uh, at the end. Once we, when we have four lines at the end, we convert these lines into, exa, uh, uh, we convert these four lines into their hexadecimal representation and that's gonna be the hash of the text uh, entered. So the operation we apply on the different lines are the operations OR and XOR, as well as the operation, the, the rotation operation. The operation OR, what does it do? So the operation OR returns one each time uh, there's at least a one in the line X or the line Y. Okay, so the line X or Y gives one if there's a one in X or Y one or y okay at this rank of the line okay so for example if i take line five okay so x5 is zero y5 is one so there's at least one one so z5 is one as well okay if i go to rank uh, four so x4 is zero y4 is zero 
so my output my output is a zero so if I merge these two lines together using the function or it gives me the following result so I write zero only if two zeros meet if there's at least a one uh, in either of, of line X or Y then the output will uh, be one as well okay so all the, the the blue numbers here are the result of having at least a one in X or Y the operation n is more severe so the operation n will return one only if two ones meet okay so so if there's a zero in either x or y then the output uh, uh, is zero the only time uh, the the resulting line um, has a one at this rank is when uh, there's a one in y and x and the function xr is in between okay it produces a one if there's a one in either x or y so when there's a one in both x and y uh, the resulting line uh, contains a zero so here are all the possibilities so two zeros produces a zero two ones produces a zero one in x zero in y produces a one uh, zero in x one in y produces a one and then finally there's going to be the rotation operation so a rotation of one bit i take one bit at the left of the line and i i i take it to the right uh, completely of the line okay so the, i can we can perform a rotation of uh, one bit two bits five bits 20 bits and a number uh, uh, between 1 and 31 so here's a rotation by one bit so i take the leftmost character i remove it and i go and place it at the end of the line a rotation by of five bits i take the the five leftmost characters and i move them to the right completely and the matrix has rotated by five bits from the left to the right reduce our 16 by 32 matrix we will begin by matching lines 1 5 9 and 13 and the two operations we will be using here are the operation XOR and the operation rotation so these are the four lines 1 5 9 and 13 put them together and first we perform the operation XOR on line 1 and 5 so this produces line A1 okay so A1 returns a 1 if there's either a 1 at this rank on line, on line 1 or line 5 I think line A1 produced using lines 1 and 5 and I XOR line A1 with line 9 and that gives me a line that I call line A2. I take line A2 and I XOR line A2 with line 13. And that gives me an output that I call line A3. Then I will rotate line A3. And I want a uh, an index that will give me by how much to rotate each line. That depends on the size of the text entered. So this will help producing like a different hash with a very tiny modification in the text entered. So what I do here is I take the sum of all ASCII codes of the text entered. So here the, uh, the sum of all ASCII codes is 3094. And then I produce the result in modulo 29. So 3094 is 106 times 29 plus 20. So uh, 3094 is congruent to 20 in modulo 20, 29 so my rotation index will always be 20 with this given text if you enter a different text the sum of all ASCII codes will be different from 3094 uh, so the rotation index may be uh, completely different it could be the same as well um, but it, it will likely be it, it has 1 in 29 chances of being the same 
So we rotate line A3 by 20 characters and that gives us line A4. So that's our first final line. So using lines 1, 5, 9, 13, performing the operations XOR and rotation by 20 bits gives us line A1, which is as follows. We do the same with lines 2, 6, 10, and 14. So we perform the, uh, the XOR bitwise operation between line 2 and 6 to produce line B1. We perform the XOR operation between B1 and 10 to produce line B2. And we perform the XOR operation between B1 and 14 to produce B3. And then we rotate B3 by 20 characters. And that gives us line B4. We do the same exercise with lines 3, 7, 11, and 15. We do the same exercise with our last group of four lines, 4, 8, 12, and 16. And this gives us the four final lines uh, given right here. If we convert these four lines into their hexadecimal representation, so that gives us the numbers here we have on the, uh, the, the rightmost uh, column of our table here. We stick the hexadecimal numbers one beside the other and that's going to be the hash produced by our homemade function on the sentence Lady Lovelace voit un chemin. If I write Lady Lovelace with a small L at Lady instead of a capital L, then the ash, the resulting ash is completely different because of the rotation index. So the initial matrix is almost the same. So when we XOR the different lines, we get approximately the same uh, result. But here, the uh, since the sum of all ASCII numbers is not the same, uh, the rotation index will be different. And this is what gives us a completely different hash uh, function, uh, hash output. So this is how a hashing function typically works. So the, the more secure functions like the SHA-256 will have uh, a whole bunch of different uh, features, like it begins with an, uh, an initial uh, matrix of zeros and ones, combines the text uh, with the initial matrix, uh, may rotate many times, may XOR many times, so, so here, I mean, there's, there's going to be a, a way, uh, a much greater number of operations to make the output the most uh, secure possible. But the operations will be about the same as the, the ones that have been shown in this presentation. So, of course, to understand what is, a, so the basis of the blockchain is a hashing function. So the blocks in the chain are chained together through a hashing function. So to understand the blockchain, one must first understand how a hashing function works and why is it so hard to undo. So this is what makes the chain very solid. And to understand well how a hashing function works, one must also be familiar with hexadecimal numbers, which is another presentation.